All right. Welcome back to Blue by 90, presented by Maze and Brew. I am Justin, joined by Jack and Kaylin, as always. And we've got a special guest on today, everyone's favorite uh, Twitter user, Lexi. <laughs> How are you doing, Lex? I'm great. How are you guys? Doing well. I'll be honest, I'm a little hungover. Um, <laughs> you know, it was a late, late game for basketball last night. Uh, and, you know, not a good ending, but. We're we're powering through. I'm I'm envious of you that you have no hangovers anymore. Honestly, God, I tell you, I do not miss it. You know, uh, went to the game on Sunday, the Lions game with my best friend, and I let her. You know, she's a mama too, so she didn't really get to get out. I was like, live it up. And then yeah, she said the next morning her head was pounding. I was like, I feel great. I don't know about you. <laughs> You're a good friend. You're a good friend for that. Yeah. Yeah, that hey, is. permanent DD, so everyone's safe. There, there you, you go. go. There you go. I the the one thing is there is sun outside today. I feel like it's been gray for the past like week and a half, and so I'm I might have to actually get outside, even though it's like I don't know 16 degrees out. It's still I I need some vitamin D in my life. Yeah, it is. It's it's really pretty, but then just walk to my car, like my fingers were frozen. Like I just <laughs> okay. I, that it's it's frigid cold, but I'll take the blue skies over that gray depressing stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, dude, I was filling up my gas tank the other day, and. uh it's funny. My wife always gives me shit because anytime I go to work or leave the house, like I wear a hoodie and I wear like sweats and I wear like maybe a beanie. She's like, why don't you ever wear a jacket? You have like three jackets you can wear. I'm like, because I'm outside for like 10 <laughs> seconds. It doesn't matter. That's, such, then I go, that's the Michigander in you for sure. <laughs> right. But the then, then I go to Sam's Club because I got to fill up my tank and I'm, I'm standing out there and I'm like, fuck, it is cold. I look at my phone. It's real feel negative three. You know, <laughs> oh, I'm like, I'm, this is why. This is why I need a coat in my car. Yeah. yeah, I went to use my wipers this morning and I made the mistake of like pulling it a little too hard and like shooting some of the fluid on the windshield immediately frozen. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah, I got to get in the cool. habit of lifting my wipers up when it gets cold because I never yeah. do. And it's like it's such an important thing because I'll rip them like. <laughs> yeah, but when you're getting out of the car, it's just like about getting into the next building as quick as possible. <laughs> like, you know. Uh, but use honestly, one of my biggest pet peeves is having a dirty windshield in the winter in Michigan. Cause there's like, you have to spray it every three seconds. Otherwise there's mm -hmm. salt and all that stuff going on. Like it's when you're on a road trip, it's impossible to keep it clean. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, well, um, all right. So we are, we're recording on Saturday after the Michigan, Illinois game. Shout out to the Illinois Twitter because they are the most annoying people on planet Earth. Uh, in so, real life, too. Let's be honest. And in real life, thing. for sure. For God. sure. They, I, okay. I tweeted a, a, something out about how they their fans were going like nuts about taking a, a double digit lead over Michigan with having Dickinson and Johns out. And obviously, we haven't played in like a month and all this stuff. I was a little, it was a little bit of a rage tweet. It was a little bit, of, I was, you know, I was, I had had a few beers in me that and I was just like us. salty. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I got some shit on there because like people were saying like, oh, well, what you don't like when you, you wouldn't cheer for your team if they were winning. And I'm like, I don't know. It just feels like these Illinois fans, like, Playing us is their Super Bowl all of a sudden. I don't get it. How how many rivals can we have? I don't understand. Yeah, I don't really get it either. And it's so annoying. I mean, it's like they complained about every call, even when it was like blatantly like obvious. Yeah. And that's like the stuff I don't like. Like you're not a good like home advantage in that scenario because then it's just laughable. Like, I don't know. But they just they just want to be like hated and in and, and our rival so bad that it's like so pathetic, you know. I just hang that banner for that win against us. You're still not gonna make it out of the first weekend this year, I bet. <laughs> yeah, they have no rivals. Who are the rivals? Northwestern, because they're also in Illinois. Yeah. I mean, do they, they have do, any rivals? The I thing mean, is that they would probably go after like Purdue, but Purdue has Indiana, and that's like a huge in state rivalry. They really right. don't have rivals, so Illinois is the MSU of Illinois. <laughs> yeah, right. except for MSU yeah. is much more talented, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. But they have, I mean, just from like a, they definitely have a little brother mentality. Like oh, I'm yeah. not, a, I hate the whole little brother thing in Michigan, mm -hmm. Michigan State now. But like they, they maybe we can just 
start calling Illinois little brother at this point. I'd be fine with that. It's it's their behavior. Like, look at me. Like, be my rival. We can beat you. Like, shut up. (laughs) (laughs) It's really not about people uh, don't understand the little brother thing because it is not really about wins and losses. It's much more about the mentality. Mm-hmm. And Illinois is definitely, you know, creating that mentality. There was there was one play where Kofi backed down Jace Howard, and then Eli came over and tried to help, and he got like an and one, uh, and then he like flexed on him. I'm like, dude, come on, you're like six <laughs> eight, two seventy, like you're gigantic, and you have Jace Howard on you. Like, what do you want, man? Yeah, I um, I'll, I'll say too, like. I was not imp- – I've, I've not really been super impressed with him this season, like with Kofi, because I just feel like he's a big guy. And you're going to make those plays when you're huge compared to everybody else. Right. But, like, is there talent outside of just being the big guy? Like, I don't think he's that guy. I don't. I think that – I don't think they'll, they'll win the Big Ten this year. I know they're on a run, but let's wait till they, like, you know, really play some teams. So. Who do you got in the Big Ten if you don't have Illinois? <sighs> You make me loud, yeah. You Sparty? I know, yeah. I do. I don't like, I don't like, like saying it, but it's like, you know, this team that that team has gotten like better and better every game I've watched. You know, and with Gabe Brown coming in and uh, being kind of a leader there, it's like, you know, I think that they have the potential too. I could say Purdue too, um, but you know, there's been some questionable games for them for me, so I'm still like on the fence. I don't want Illinois winning at the most, so I'll say that. <laughs> Yeah, I'll agree it's with that. sad. It's sad when we're gonna root for Michigan State over Illinois. That's what these fans have done to us. Seriously, they bring us together. It's like ridiculous. Like if you can bring that fan base together, you know you're like just the worst. The worst. Yeah. Don't look now. Northwestern's up twelve nine on MSU. So I mean, sure. I, don't, who knows? I heard Pete Nance is out too. Is he? Is he? I don't know. I didn't see. Yeah. Um. Damn. All I'll right, tell you well, what, I'm rooting for Sparty today. I put in a uh, 12 team parlay. Oh god. And uh, oh, we'll I got that. um I got Sparty winning that game. So typically what I what I really need to do is just start putting out my bet slips and tell people to bet against that because I always lose everything. <laughs> <laughs> Fade Jack. That's what it, it should Fade be. Me. That's what it That's should gotta be. be the new play. Dang. Um all right, before we talk more about the Big Ten, though, I do want to talk about what we saw from Michigan last night because I've went into this game. Well, first of all, let's talk about Hunter and and Brandon being out. Brandon Johns warmed up. He was literally warming up and then deemed that he couldn't play, went back into the tunnel in the locker room and didn't come out. I'm just so confused at these COVID protocols now. So first and foremost, like Hunter made the trip. Brandon, you know, warmed up. Why are these guys not able to play? I don't get it. Did yeah. did Brandon Johns not play because of COVID protocols? It said medical reasons. I thought it said like it was stamina and conditioning issues. Which yeah, but why is it stem from COVID? I don't know. Like, I mean, I get it because like you're not gonna be if you haven't practiced at all, you're not gonna be in shape. But why can't you then put Hunter and and Brandon in? for two minute spurts then that would still help us. Right. Mm-hmm. Cause that was the big problem yeah. yesterday was we played with them for three quarters of the game. And then we just got burnt out. We just didn't have anybody else to put in when Jaron falls is playing half the game. I mean, what do you, what can you expect? You know, yeah. no shout out to Jaron falls though. Honestly, he did everything he possibly could have. You're going against one of the top big men in the country. Um, and, so shout out to him, honestly. He did he played pretty well for all things considered. Yeah. I'm like honestly, I, I'm I know we lost and it sucks losing to Illinois, but God, there was just so many positives I took out of that game. I mean, the grit alone, I mean, we we worked harder than Illinois the whole time. Had we had just a handful of those bunnies go in, like the, yeah. the little lamps that were just roll out, you're like, oh, they need that. You know, and Caleb too, I want shots to start falling for him Jesus, because man. he needs that confidence to be good. Like that's, that's kind of clear across the point. Like when he keeps missing, I feel like it does affect his mentals, which it would anybody, you know, yeah. but he's young. So he's, you know, I think they eventually start falling, but they just, they outworked, they out hustled. The defense was incredible given like what we were down. I mean, 
honestly, I was impressed. And I'm and I, it, it's a good path to be on, even though it was a loss. I'll tell you what. I Caleb Houston, I've never seen a guy start off a season so hot and then go so cold. He yeah. did you see the stat? He has made he's two for like 21 since December 11th. Like that's over a month, man. I know they've that's had tough, games man. canceled, but when you're when you're appointed as the that that three point threat, like, I mean, obviously that's been a huge miss for Michigan right now. Um, one one I thing, I, one bad. win I do want to take from that situation is he'll be back. He's next gonna year. come back, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, and he and he's a young guy. He reclassified. Yeah, you, you do know, have he, to remember he should be a senior in high school, right? Yeah, right. I said so, that know. one time, and everyone was like, "You're making excuses." Like, no, I'm just making an observation that he's <laughs> not yet. That he's 18 <laughs> years old, <laughs> right? Like, not maybe, not even. You know, could yeah. he could still be 17? I don't really know how old he is, but I've, but that's good having him come back next year. Hopefully, mm-hmm. I mean, I'll I think us. I don't know. Will Moose even come back too? I don't see. Musa, you think? I don't know. Maybe. I I think so. I he I when you looked at when you looked at who or Musa standing next to Kofi, it was like, oh my god, Kofi is twice of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Musa's got to put on some weight. Kalen, what were you saying about Caleb Houston? Well, I thought they shot what one for ten from the three. That's you. You can't Last win night, games yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and mm-hmm. Houston was 0 for 4. But he, but but like you were saying, Lexi, I mean, they're just like they're in and out. Like mm-hmm. he hits both sides of the rim and it bounces well, out. They're good shots. That's they one are. thing. And they're open up. shots and they're, they're good, good shots. looks. Like yeah. they're not going in, but they're good looks. The ball movement hit was good. You know, they just got, mm-hmm. once they start falling, who knows? This team could come out and make a run for the tournament. I'm praying to God that they I could. They could. could. I'm with like, you. Yeah, there, there's so much potential. There's so much talent. There is. Like they just gotta find that. You know chemistry fully like consistently all right and now that you're talking about chemistry i i want to talk about the elephant in the room is Come michigan on, man. Right better here. without hunter dickinson i i just i <laughs> i don't want to say it because hunter is very good and i think he does a, obviously a lot of good things but the hustle and movement yesterday was on a different level that i haven't seen from this team all year thought the same thing didn't like that I thought the same thing, <laughs> you know, but I I even said to Jake, you know, it's like, oh, my gosh, like, is is he the issue here? And, I mean, he has been, like, well, averaging, what, like 25? Or he, he's, like, in the 20s averaging, like, points a game. And, like, yeah. that's great. That is great. And people say, oh, you can't, like, dog him. But, like, there's just something that's just not there for him this year. I don't know what it is. I, I can't pinpoint it. I can't say that he's not hustling because most of the time he does. There's some times where I'm like, come on, man, you could have tried a little bit harder right there, you know? And I don't know if it's just, you know, I, I don't know what it is. And I don't want to say anything bad about him because he is a great player and, you know, one of the best player on our team, I'd say, you know, but it's a little bit to question there with how, like, how hard the team played and the heart that was on the floor. I mean, put your aluminum foil hat on. He's got a <laughs> bunch of NIL deals. Maybe know. he's, you know, a little more focused on that, maybe not. You know, I'm, I'm hugely speculating on this. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, do think there's a, some mental stuff of like him. He thought he was going to come in as this preseason All American and do all these things. His effort level is not hasn't been there. You know, we saw him in the last game that they played. I mean, he's just like not going for rebounds and not you know doing a lot of things. And I think just in general because of his size and you know he's obviously not as athletic as a Musa is Musa comes in there and he doesn't have the the ability you know on defense that Hunter does and doesn't have you know the size quite but he does move around and he moves in the paint and does a lot of different things and I think too um there there definitely is something about playing two bigs at in one game where neither guy can kind of get in a rhythm and there's there are two totally opposite bigs. So it's like it, there is something to say about that too. Mm-hmm. I agree. I think I, once Moose like bulks up a little bit with how well he moves and like even his ball handling skills though for how big he is are pretty good. You know, he's just got to get some meat on them bones so he can like rock somebody in the paint, you know, but I, I hope he does come back for another year because I think he'll be like him and Caleb will be stellar next year. Really do well. Him, Caleb, Kobe, Frankie taking over as the as Frankie the, as the point oh guard. Me, <laughs> but Dante, 
Devontae played well. I mean, Devontae had 17. He was their, our only guy that could score consistently mm-hmm. yesterday. So the yep. one thing that I was thinking when I've been watching like these Michigan games this year, right? It's like, I don't know. They don't, they don't look like the team did last year, right? Like it doesn't look like they're having set plays. You know, they're kind of just like almost like a little free for all of like, all right, who's going to take a shot? Who's going to, who's going to get a bucket. And right now Devontae Jones is thriving in that situation. I feel like because he's just like, all right, I got to take over. I got to go get a bucket yep. and he's, and he's making plays happen. So, mm-hmm. I mean, right, right now I'm going to go into the, you know, the mode that I was in for before football season started, you know, before we knew that, you know, Michigan was going to be big 10 champs going to the college football playoff, beating Ohio state. And I'm just like, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a good time. You know, I just want these players to play well. I like the effort. I like seeing Jace out there. I like seeing Kobe out there. I like seeing Frankie out there, you know, get the young guys in and, you know, have fun. That's, that's kind of where I'm at at this point. I'm, I'm totally bought out on uh, I'm off the bandwagon until, until things improve, but I, I like seeing the young guys get in. What what happened to positive vibes only? <laughs> That's my we positive to... vibe. That's my positive vibe. I, I want to see the players play well. All right. I mean, correct yeah. me Just if I'm twist. wrong. I tweaked it. I tweaked it. <laughs> but like I, when I'm like watching the bench, they don't look quite as excited as they did last year where guys were like, you know, fainting on the sidelines. So True. I mean, hard to when to, you're losing too. But I mean, to me, that says li- maybe something a little bit deeper about the key- team chemistry there. I don't know, and maybe I'm just totally Could like be. missing the great moments on the bench, you know, watching the game. But I, think I don't know right. if you guys in see general. That. In general, you're correct. I mean, I don't know about the bench specifically, but the chemistry is not quite there. It feels like they, there's the pieces, but they're not one team, you know. Right. So that's what I, I think definitely is missing. Um, you know, when you look at the box score from last night, though, you know, Devontae Jones had 17, Musa had nine, uh, Eli had seven, you know, like it was, just, it was spread around, which is good, but they, we need some more <laughs> production from some of these guys. Like, you know, Terrence Williams gets his first start and only puts up two points. You know, that's a guy that I know that he's not going to be this like prolific offensive scorer, but you need to be able to produce there, um, you know? And so, you know, a Caleb Houston is the same. Obviously we've talked about him, but like five points on nine shots, man, that's just, that's not going to get it done. Yeah. And that, that's kind of at the same time though, where I'll give Illinois a little bit of credit because they were just suffocating on like the outside, like, you know, got a couple of fouls for it, but like, they weren't letting an easy three go up, you know? So it's like those open shots weren't always there unless they got that ball movement perfectly. You know, it was just really driving to the basket that they were doing the most, you know, the, the most well on, I don't know. <laughs> we're not very good with pronunciation here. So yeah, don't worry about it. Row thinks uh, continuity is a word. So <laughs> I've learned it's now continuity, but you know, I think I can say it however the hell I want. So, um I you know I wanted to give a shout out to as well is Jace Howard. Jace oh, Howard went in there and actually played pretty dang well. Loved it. There were times where he looked out of sorts for sure, but him coming in and blocking Kofi right away was electric. That was yeah, I got hype. Hey, I was I'm like, oh, on that bench hype. I was jumping in my living room like, let's go. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was impressive. And the best play of the game was just that defensive effort. And then Devontae is yeah. stepping back to hit that three. I was like, God, it just made me wish we would have won at that point, you know? I know. But, yeah, Jace has just been incredible. You know, it's like not not like, you know, starting ability, but like coming off the bench and giving that kind of effort, that's all you can ask for from somebody. You know, it's like that. It, I'm just – I love him this year. It's just – it's been fun to watch him and kind of step up when, when other people haven't. Yeah, right? I mean, that, that little bit of energy can create a whole lot of momentum. So That's uh, what we're talking that. about with Shondi, right? Like, oh, yeah, that's, right. That exactly. was with Shondi. If he can come in, you know, I, he can shoot. Like, it doesn't have to be him, you know, whether it's Kobe or, uh, or Frankie or somebody. Like, we need that energy, but we also need points from it, too. Um, you know, but honestly, I could see Jace being, like, this senior – that come it maybe is a starter for Michigan at some point where he's not like super talented, but he does all the right things. He, you know, I, I could definitely see that for him in his future. I don't think he's just going to ride the pine for his entire career here in Michigan. No. And he's also, he, he's a big guard, right? He's I mean, he's six, what, six, six right? seven, six, mm-hmm. six, two something. So, I mean, he can still develop, 
you know, we, we've seen it happen in this program before. So I've got, you know, I'm, I, I hope Jace is able to do that. And, you know, maybe he'll be a, a big uh, six, contributor, seven. right? Right. Yeah. Six, six seven, seven two twenty five. 25. That's, that's big for yeah. a big two hard. or three. He doesn't look, he doesn't look that tall in the court. Doesn't, you know? I know. I, doesn't. I, what I'm intrigued about though, is even next year seeing like that brotherly chemistry. And if there was oh, like, yeah. you know, kick that, I'm like, Oh, yeah. you know, it's like, I, I hate the fact that I'm already looking forward to next year. Cause this, this season's been, you know, brutal to watch, you know, and it's not over by any means, but there's right. just a lot of stuff to look forward to in this program. And that's kind of what I'm focusing my sanity on. <laughs> <laughs> you have to, <laughs> you do have to, you do have to. Um, I, the, um, what was I just about to say? I just lost it. Probably something stupid. I mean, it was definitely <laughs> something stupid. Uh, well, I, I guess I, I would have liked to see some of the young guys like Frankie, Frankie and Kobe got, uh, 13 and 18 minutes. Um, I honestly, at this point, I know Devonte was playing well, but I would have loved to see Kobe in there instead of, uh, you know, instead of Terrence, maybe if Terrence wasn't getting the job done. Um, you know, I, I'm, I agree. I'm not, I'm not, I'm trying not to look forward to next year yet, but like, let's think about Michigan could have a, a down year this year and people write them off next year could be that year then where it's like, okay, Michigan's the underdog comes in and nobody's expecting them with Jet Howard in there with some other guys. Like it could be, it could be a pretty damn good team. And I know I'm not in the minority here with this, but like I'd rather Michigan basketball be slept on because that's when they do better. You know, it's like those expectations that early, like, you know, preseason top five. Yeah. I don't want it. (laughs) I mean, look at at Michigan football. Same thing. What? Same thing with Michigan football, right? Like this past year, slept on fucking best year we've seen in forever. Yeah. The expectations weren't there, and all of a sudden the pressure's off, and these guys like ball out. So, yeah, yeah. I'd take you that any it. day. You see that all the time in, in sports, you know, especially in college athletics. You mm-hmm. know, a top five team always, always goes, you know, 500 or something. But I, I don't know. I, I, we said it on our last podcast too. If they play like they just did through down the stretch, like they're going to win some games and they could mm-hmm. be this, this uh, threat possibly in the big 10 tournament. That would be incredible for them to make a run <laughs> in the big 10 tournament. There would be nothing that I would love more than to possibly break some hearts down the stretch when we've got essentially nothing to lose. Right. Yeah, I'll be insufferable if we even make the tournament. Because of all this, like I've been bookmarking tweets left and right because I'm angry <laughs> if we do, you know. But I will. I'll be insufferable, especially if we make a run. You might as well just block me or mute me now, people. <laughs> oh god, that almost makes it more fun as a fan base, though, right? Like, because that's one thing I love about basketball, and I've said this a million times. Like, you can be so average throughout the regular season. And you still, you know, as long as you win your conference tournament, you make it to March Madness. And you can get on a run, you know, late in the year and things can happen. You know, season's not over for this basketball Mm -hmm. team. Never over. You know, football, obviously, it's a little bit different because it's not the same situation. But basketball, season's really never over until, you know, (laughs) mid-February. You know, I mean, they got a lot of time to figure it out. I know. And that's what makes me happy, though, is the time that they have. And that's why, like, Mar- March Madness is by far the best postseason in any any sport, you know, just because, oh, yeah. you know, the upsets. I mean, sometimes it always comes down to the one, two, three, four seeds in the final final four. But, like, that path there is just so electric. I love it. So oh, much parity. Um, well, let's talk about the rest of the Big Ten then, uh, you know, as we're, as we're talking about the tournament and all that stuff. Um, I – you know, there there are some – the tough thing for Michigan right now is there still are a lot of good teams in the Big Ten. And they – whether you want to say fortunately, unfortunately, for the games that they've had canceled, but they did miss out on two of the better teams in the Big Ten uh, in Michigan State and Purdue. And now their stretch actually isn't so bad now that they come back. I think they've got Maryland coming up, uh, Northwestern coming up. So it's not terrible for them to possibly get on a run here. Um, but, you know, you look at the Big Ten uh, standings right now, Illinois on top, Michigan State tied with them, but a game back because they play uh, right now. It is 29-28, still Northwestern with four wow. minutes left in the, in the half. So. It's okay. That's the money line. Good saying. <laughs> um, 
Wisconsin annoyingly is is good. Like Brad Davidson at age basically the same age as as Lexi at this point. Um, <laughs> Dude, honestly, he's been there for like nine years. <laughs> um, but they're playing well. They just beat Ohio State the other night, correct? All right, cool. Glad everyone was out on the same page there. <laughs> Um, yeah. Yes, they did beat Ohio State. They did, yeah. and then, um, that was a big they, win. Yeah, Davidson's just so like uh, aggravating. It's like you word. know, I know if I was a Wisconsin fan, I just totally dig it because he, you know, even if he has played for like seven years, it's like the guy is a great defender and hits those damn shots when when it's needed. And it's like it's the last person I want to see pumped up on the floor. But <laughs> you know, they, they they are good this year, um, and I think they're kind of still being slept on a little bit. And I know I, you know, before this, we talked about like who would think the big 10, like I think Michigan state, Purdue, Wisconsin, Illinois, you know, it's just, it, it's such a toss up. There's not a team that I'm like, Oh yeah, they're going to win it. So it's, you know, and then who knows Michigan can make that run and, and kind of swoop in at the last minute, but uh, we'll see. It can happen. It can happen. Mm-hmm. Well, I think we all kind of thought Purdue was going to be that team, right? They were, you know, pre, preseason they were ranked really highly then they they won a couple of games to get to number one then they go lose to Rutgers and now all of a sudden they're you know they're still 14 and two obviously but three and two in the big 10 um you know I I don't know do you guys think that they are still one of those top five teams or have they dropped now because I you know maybe it's just going through the big 10 the gauntlet um and they're still possibly one of those top uh, five, ten teams in the country. You say Purdue? Yeah. I mean, they have the tallest guy I've ever seen in my life. So <laughs> That's true. Zach Eady like, is made in a plant somewhere. It, where do they find these years. guys? It's always like Purdue and just giants. <laughs> they just like go out in those cornfields and they just pluck them. <laughs> Except this one is like a, a international cornfield. <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it's a... Uh... It's going to be an interesting run down the stretch. And who's going to step up? You know, what players are going to step up? I don't want Wisconsin winning it almost as no. much as I don't want Illinois winning it. So I think Purdue's well, the only team. That makes me like wish that. the Michigan State could even win it. Illinois, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like you. <laughs> the, uh, I mean, the weird thing is, is like Purdue goes uh, on the road to Penn State, who has been awful. And only wins by seven. And then I know they play in Mackey, and obviously they play really well in Mackey, but they won by almost 30 yesterday against Nebraska. So they're kind of a streaky team. I I, I just expected them to kind of roll through a lot of these teams. Um, and they and they just haven't uh with everybody, even like they only beat Nichols State by 14, you know, at home. So yeah. they scored a hundred. It's a very points. respectable program over there. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Sleeping on Nichols That's State. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, they haven't done anything that's like really impressed me. They're just uh they're they're big. You know, I will say too, because I kind of just left this out, but like Keegan Murray in Iowa, I mean, what an incredible player. Do I think that they can make a run? I don't know, but he he's so fun to watch, like so talented. Um so yeah, that's another one that's kind of like a, you know, who knows if they can run, make a run for it. Yeah, it's true. I mean, everyone thought because they, you know, were lo- losing Garza and nobody even like mentioned them in in it because they lost a lot of their guys. But mm-hmm. Keegan Murray out of nowhere, kind of stepping up here. So yeah. Like I didn't mention, or I did forget to leave out, like Johnny Davis too for Wisconsin. Like we talked about that damn Brad, and it's like here is Johnny know. Davis, one of the best players in the nation. That's that's really helping Wisconsin actually win them all. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, you're not, you're not wrong. It's just <laughs> no matter who, uh, as long as Brad Davison is at Wisconsin, that's who I'm focusing on, whether I like it or not. Honestly. <laughs> oh well. Yeah, yeah, you don't really have a choice there. <laughs> no, unfortunately, unfortunately. Well, the uh, the basketball season is rolling on here. Um, you know, it's tough right now. I, I'm glad that we got positive things for Michigan's game yesterday because I was having trouble just like getting into the season, like being, you know, in it. I It just felt like this weird thing, obviously, with Michigan playing poorly and with COVID, it was like, all right, 
when is basketball season going to start, even though we're halfway through it. So hopefully they can at least be somewhat fun to watch for the next, uh, you know, however many months, weeks, whatever it is. Um, because then I'll, I, it is college basketball. I love college basketball. It's so basketball. much fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, it's super fun to bet on too, because you can bet, you know, the half. You can bet a, a lot of guys like, quarters what, and yeah, the live betting is quarters. legit for sure. Um, um, well, yeah. shit, yeah, they don't have quarters, do they? Yeah, Why is men's basketball idiot. in college only basketball? It doesn't have quarters. I that makes no sense to me. It's a great I question. I hate it. I want to bet quarters. Women, I need to change women's it. College just quarters, so it's like, yeah. how are you just? It's got to be something. You know, with the league there and that, but they do media. Right, mark, finals. mark, mark my words. Every four today minutes. is the last day that I bet men's basketball until they go to quarters. I'm only betting women's <laughs> basketball from here on out. Wow, <laughs> known Come feminine, yeah, Shield. <laughs> you know, hey. how do you think I got married? <laughs> <laughs> uh, she had to settle. Unfortunately, <laughs> she settled hard. I appreciate that. It's a tough look for Heather. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, obviously, like I said, basketball still rolling on. Uh, football off season, it's we're on Harbaugh watch day seventy eight. Uh, it feels <laughs> like I'm I'm a little frustrated um, because all these things are happening that seem like good things for Michigan, but at the same time it feels like we're waiting for the Raiders to be done with their season and see what happens there. So then like, I can't fully think, okay, yes. And Jim Harbaugh is staying at Michigan. Where, where do you guys, are you guys feeling good or bad right now about this whole situation? Um, I mean, honestly, I was skeptical, but then, you know, when we made that hire from Notre Dame, it's like, it was just, Kind of like to me, like, why would he take that job, you know, leaving his, you know, because he, he told Notre Dame he was going to stay, you know, once Brian Kelly left. But then you like go and take, why would you take that job, you know, without a head coach being certain? You know what I mean? And, and, I, and we all know Harbaugh. He's going to do what he's going to do. Doesn't care about a damn thing the media or the world says, and he'll do it on his own time. Um, I think he's just making him look silly at this point. I think he was trying to work the NIL deal and maybe get some more money for for staff and stuff. Um, and I really hope that I'm right in that because I've been uh, <laughs> I've been pretty adamant for a while that I'm like, you know, he's not going to screw over Michigan. He's not going to leave us. And if he does, you know, hopefully he he leaves us in a good way. Um, you know, but I think he's staying. I'm not worried about it. Not worried on the record. I know. Famous last words. Yeah, right. Oh God, that makes you nervous. But I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I didn't. I didn't even think about that. Uh, that hire from Notre Dame too. I mean, that's a good point as well. I I just think that it comes out every year. Nothing ever comes of it. So I'm not going to think of anything. You know, right now. I do love that. Um, uh, the the Dolphins owner, Michigan grad. I don't know why I'm blanking on his name. Stephen Ross. Ross. Stephen Ross. I knew it was Ross something. Uh, he just came out. He's like, yeah, I'm not going to be that guy that takes Harbaugh away from Michigan because he would just no. be disowned from the Michigan fan well, base. And anyone saying people. that, it's like you were just like literally, you know, associating Michigan and Michigan. Why would he want to jeopardize the football program that literally the athletic campus is named after him? Like, come right, on, right. you know, <laughs> use your brain. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think too, I mean, from our last podcast with Brad Robbins, it felt like Brad would be pretty surprised if coach was not staying. You know, he, it felt like that he didn't know. He said he still doesn't know what's going on. Um, but uh, yeah, he said it would be it would it would kind of come as a surprise if anything um, were to happen there. But it just I don't know this whole Raiders thing with Raiders still being in the playoffs and all that stuff. It, it, it just like it's that last little thing. And maybe he's holding out to see what that offer officially is from the Raiders and see what happens. But it just makes me nervous. I don't know. Um, but the, the, uh, the Mike Elston uh, hire for the D-line coach, I, I completely agree. If you are going to leave your job that he's been at for 10-plus years, I think it is, for another school, even if it's your alma mater, you're going to know that the head coach is going to be there because otherwise, like, a new head coach could come in and completely clean house. That happens all the time. Yeah. 
I feel like Harbaugh, like, and they made that hire to, like, settle the fan base, and I feel like it still hasn't had that effect like he hoped it would. <laughs> like, people still don't. I don't know, like, you know, Raiders coach, what, Basaccia? I don't know how to pronounce it. Something hey, like I'm, that. Yeah, I'm rooting well, for the Raiders today. As long as he keeps winning, we're Yeah, good. well, and I mean, honestly, though, I why wouldn't they keep him? You know, the, the players are playing so hard for him. Um, you know, I have them winning anyways, you know, I think it's going to be a good game. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just, I think that they should keep him and not even like on the, on the basis of don't take carb off from us, but just on the basis that the, you know, the, the, the players like playing for him and that's all you can ask for. in someone who's been as depleted as the Raiders for the last however many years, you know, so. It's also just like classic Harbaugh to like not say anything, right? Like, exactly. especially he like went on that radio show and they're like, all right, so what's next? And he's like, well, spend time with the family so that uh, I can get to it. And you're like, what, what does that mean? Like, just say I'm staying at Michigan. Like, just Harbaugh being Harbaugh. Yeah. So like, I think he just Stubborn. loves like so watching people freak out and he's just like, <laughs> yeah, he just wants to see the world burn. Exactly. <laughs> well, especially now that it's in like good light for him, you know, people last year, he was being shopped around for these jobs because people didn't want him at Michigan. Now he's he even said, he's like, I'm having more fun with it this year. I'm like, Oh, Hold yeah. on. stop toying with our hearts, having fun. Just tell us you're back, bro. But... <laughs> <laughs> Just say it. Damn it. I know. And I put up that tweet about like, <laughs> about he gone. <laughs> yeah. Oh about. yeah. Freaking was, like, everybody like, out. Oh, the Colts, yeah. And, uh, yeah I've got your notifications on, and all I saw was tweet from Lexi that said, he gone. I was like, oh, holy shit. shit. <laughs> I've never clicked on something faster, honestly. Well, okay, oh, that would make a little sense. <laughs> oh. oh, God. But I did I did want to talk about the Mike Elston hire. I, I mean, this is a dynamite hire. We talked about it uh beforehand what would we want to see from a d-line coach when uh you know now that sean new is not at michigan and we said we wanted a big time recruiter mike elston not only is a great d-line coach he was the recruiting coordinator also at notre dame and he was pulling in five stars big time um they actually have a five star i think d-lineman committed to them right now that he recruited that I think we're hoping and praying he had Michigan in his top whatever, and, and maybe he brings him over with him. But Let's flip that over, yeah. I, yeah. I, I think it was a huge hire. Yeah. I, and, I mean, and you can tell, too, because I was kind of getting into it with some Notre Dame fans yesterday, which, you know, they're just as annoying as, like, more annoying than most other fan bases, but that's beside the point. <laughs> but the fact that how angry they are at him, at Michigan, like, you you just know that, that that that's how good of a hire it is, and and I'm actually kind of excited that they did outside hire this and bring yeah. someone in that is a good recruiter because you know not that I wouldn't have been um, happy with uh, Osborne like being promoted, um, but it just gives a more like substantial solid solidity in like the fact that this guy is a recruiting you know guru too, so he's the head of it and still good at recruiting. So I, I'm really happy with it. Solid hire. For sure. I, I think that's what Michigan has been missing at, at the D-line position for, uh, you know, especially on the interior. Obviously, Mozzie Smith and Chris Hinton were big, big guys, you know, big recruits. But uh, Sean Nua, let's be honest, missed out on a lot of those big recruits. You know, mm -hmm. I felt like we had so many D-linemen have Michigan in their top three, but choose somewhere else. So I'm really hoping that Mike Elston comes in, lands some big time recruits on the D-line, you know. That definitely feels like what could be missing for Michigan to make that next, next step, you know, where it's, you know, that's the, that's what Georgia and Alabama do, right. Is they have gigantic men on the interior. Um, you know, so if Mike Elson comes in and brings in a few four or five stars, uh, you know, that would be just gigantic. And then if, obviously if he can, um, if he can develop, these guys even more so too mm -hmm. um that would be huge and i almost wonder too sorry i'm rambling i just keep going on there's like commas at do you know <laughs> this is like a run-on sentence <laughs> but uh i do this 17 times a podcast so you guys oh. should be used to it right now. um do you think chris hinton is like hey maybe i should not go to the nfl now or what i hope so 
Yeah. I'd love to have him back. That one was kind of a surprise for me. I'm not gonna lie. Me too. Just a little, me too. little thing back. I mean, more power to him. Go get go get that money and get that in the league, you know. But yeah, who knows? Maybe he could be like, okay, maybe I'll maybe I'll come back, you know. Like that'd be pretty dope. <laughs> we would take it. We would take oh, it yeah. for sure. Um yeah, I think that uh we'll we'll see what happens this weekend with the Raiders, but I I just I don't know. All signs are pointing towards Jim Harbaugh staying. Uh, but I just, this, this whole NFL thing, the whole Raiders thing is just for the third time. Now I'm saying it, it's like, it just gives me uneasy feelings. Yeah. I can only imagine the, um, if the Raiders do end up losing that, uh, oh, the Michigan series. Twitter is going to be in a shit storm. Uh, just even like the national media too. Oh yeah. <sighs> we'll see. We'll see. Well, now they have to like the the NFL teams like tweet out, "Hey, we've interviewed this person for the candidacy for our head coach." If that if somebody tweets out, "The Raiders have interviewed Jim Harbaugh for the candidacy for their head coach," Twitter is going to it, it might actually like fail. It'll be it'll burn to the ground. <laughs> oh I'll deactivate. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That I'm, might, off. I'm off the grid. Yeah. <laughs> that might be the yeah. the first time I log off. Um, but at the same time, I'll be watching every single tweet. Oh, yeah. yeah. God. That would be wild. Um, all right. Anything else you guys want to touch on here before we sign off for the day? I got nothing. 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 Talk a little better. hoops. Talk a little basketball. Lexi, uh, plug all the stuff that you're working on here. You know, we know that you've been uh, – You've been doing some a lot of big things and more big things to come. So tell us all about that. Yeah. So um, yeah, I've just started producing a new show um for sports betting, uh, weekly Saturday mornings, eleven a.m. Pushing orange juice. Uh, have not created the Twitter handle for it yet, but I am with Multiplicity Media, which you can follow them on Twitter at Multiplicity MG. Um, great Wait, group of can guys. I, can I ask you what pushing orange juice means? Um, you know, so I really don't know. I mean, obviously the push is for betting, <laughs> but it's also too, I think, because they like, they drink mimosas, um, during, uh, during, during okay. the thing. So, um, right. I actually, to be honest, you know, the Greg's probably gonna be like, what the hell, you know, but I never really asked, um, <laughs> no, <laughs> but just, just run with it. I, you know, I've helped create the graphics for it, um, and everything and never really asked, um, exactly why, but I'm sure it's probably along those lines. Of mimosas and uh, yeah. getting drunk in the morning, talking about bets. <laughs> yeah, we're, um, we're all about that. Yeah, but they, they, uh, they need three what? idiots to uh, to talk a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't need to talk. I just want to come drink mimosas. <laughs> I know. Yeah, they're, they're a great, great group of guys to work with. It's it's been really. I've been blessed in uh, the fact that they reached out to me first to produce it. Um, but right now it's coming out of Sleepers Media, um, YouTube and Twitter account. So um, that's Greg and Carter, um, for those that don't know, um, and part of the guys who have helped start Multiplicity Media. So um, go ahead and follow Sleepers Media, at Sleepers Media on Twitter, and uh, subscribe to their YouTube channel too. But it's just been a blast, you know, and I've been writing some articles too, um, being featured in some stuff, uh, some college football, and uh, just published, we just published another article today on the uh, NFL Wildcard Weekend's pick, so you can go to my account, which you see on the scrolling down thing, uh, go blue Lexi one, one seven, and, uh, give that a read. Um, you know, I, whoever ends up winning the bets does get a little money incentive. So let's pray Ooh. for me to beat the boys. <laughs> like, there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. It's been and, fun uh, though. Crazy, crazy fall for both of us. You know, you guys have been booming, but Pat surpassed me in followers, might I say, because I know me and Justin had a conversation and I was so happy for wow. you guys. Sorry. I know it's Sorry. just awesome to see like so many people supporting you and, and, uh, you know, enjoying the content. Cause I've been enjoying it from the beginning. So don't you guys forget it. You're an OG. Oh, you can't forget You're the OGs. OGs. Yeah. <laughs> it, it all started with an aunt, uh, aunt right. Shout out. I know, but yeah. The, honestly, out of I, nowhere. I, that's, like, that's what awesome. where I hooked it up, and then getting the big Dickinson energy sweatshirt order from you guys. Yep, yeah, yep. yeah. That's like that's a year ago now. That's kind of crazy. So I know. you're a real one. You are a real one. <laughs> love you, you guys. Love you. Hey, I got even like the Kings of the North. On I know there. you're oh, rocking yeah, the baby. merch. I love too. it. <laughs> love so it, my friends. That's all. It's all about in this business, you know. Yep. And we've got some some big things possibly uh, happening behind the scenes too, so we're excited. Uh, and I know you do too, 
um, with some stuff coming out hopefully this spring too. So um, <laughs> we'll see. You know, it, it's just it has been very fun to you know we've made friends here uh, through social media and through our podcast and all that stuff. It's been super fun to watch everybody grow and you know we we love watching. We we don't dislike anybody honestly. So mm-hmm. we love watching all of our friends. Uh, all of our- <laughs> Jack. There's, there's like, speak for yourself my friend <laughs> well, i just like you i mean I, I, the only people i dislike are on our own podcast <laughs> makes sense uh, positive yeah. vibes only positive vibes yeah. only. who is this <laughs> bro, anyway <Who's> <laughs> oh but uh it's been super fun for sure and we're, we're rooting for you so we're excited to see what you got coming out next um so go follow lexi and all of her work there and then you can follow us at blue by 90 on twitter instagram facebook and uh we are on the maize and brew youtube channel um where you're watching this right now so lexi thanks so much for joining us we appreciate you coming on and uh go blue thanks for having me guys go blue go blue